You're watching Daytime Tea Time with Candace. Daytime Tea Time. I mean, it's Daytime Tea Time. Yeah. No, no way. way. Yeah. Only I'm the in your breasts and that's totally true. That's Daytime Tea Time. It's time to pour this tea, stir this tea, and sip this tea. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, it's Candace. All right, you see that title, so you already know. We're about to talk about Miss K. Michelle. All right, you guys, in case you missed it, Miss K. Michelle did a very long interview with Jason Lee from Hollywood Unlocked. The interview was about two hours long. They had to split it up into two parts, but K. Michelle was very open about any and everybody. Y'all know how K. Michelle is. She has no filter. She'll tell you what it is and how it is with all the details in between. So when Jason Lee asked her about her past, Past relationship with R. Kelly, I was super ready. I just knew she was gonna spill the beans on him about him being a child molesting, controlling child predator. Because for those of you who don't know, when K. Michelle started in the industry, she was actually living with R. Kelly at one point. He was one of the biggest parts of her creative development and all of that good stuff. So knowing that information, I just knew she was gonna spill the tea on R. Kelly. But no, she did not. She straight up covered up for R. Kelly. And in so many words, she admitted that she was covering up for him. She basically said that she's seen a lot and anything that she saw, she would just talk to her mother about it. And she's not telling R. Kelly secrets because she feels like he saved her life so she can't ruin his life. I swear it y'all, I cannot make this stuff up. Okay, so listen to her response when Jason Lee asked her, have you ever asked R. Kelly if he ever effed with little girls? And did you ever just like be in bed and roll over one night and say, did you really fuck with little girls? You know what? I didn't want to believe it. I need it out. I need it. You know what I'm saying? Because he had rescued you. Yeah. But then now you needed to be able to rescue yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I get it. It was a thing. Whatever I saw, I just... I just like can talk to my mom and things like that and um, musically you can only talk to him through music you can't have like me talking you're not gonna get anywhere with him he only talks through music yeah he used to be so excited okay so then Jason Lee asked K Michelle about the mute R Kelly movement and if she thinks that his music should be banned and y'all her response is her saying that he saved her so she don't want to kill him she doesn't even answer the question She's not going to say anything negative about R. Kelly because she feels like she owes him for all of the help he gave her living in his house and everything. Check this out. But but do you think after all these years they should start banning his music? You know what? Um, that has been a thing because people have reached out. They want to know the truth. They want to know things. And it's like this thing where you save me and I want to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Um, through like my medical situation, his management call about, you know, I wanted him to take care of it, things like that. Um, it puts me in a bad situation because it's like, I do have a voice for women. Mm -hmm. And I remember when nobody believed me. And I'd be sitting there like. But then at the same time, this is the person you know personally who rescued you personally. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And I, I know what I know, <laughs> you know. I be looking at them girls and I be feeling like so bad. You know what I'm saying? And I be like, oh my God, I was asking for that one person mm -hmm. to tell the truth about what happened to me because it was people that knew. All right, y'all. So I really want to tell y'all my opinion, but I got one more clip for y'all. In this clip is where I realized that K. Michelle is basically describing what all of the other R. Kelly victims have been saying which is that they were not allowed to look at or give attention to males. And K. Michelle tells a story about basically witnessing that same behavior from some women in his house. Check this out. I just remember he had a, um, a fish tank and it was like a well, shark tank and you could like drop things in it. The shark died and he put women in it. And I remember waking up and walking out and I saw these naked women in a tank. Wait, real women? Yes. And I said, oh shit. So you put your hand on the glass, they'll mime the glass, like mimic the glass. If you in are mad, house. yeah, in their own salary. That was their job. To come and get in the tank. Yes, and they would be like this, naked. And then if you're a woman and you put your hand on the glass, they would mock, like mimic you. Mm -hmm. But if you're a man, they wouldn't even pay you no attention. And they would stand there. And then he ended up dropping the Grammys and now and her shit. 
She's laughing while telling that story, trying to say that those women who were in the fish tank were on salary. How do you know they were on salary? Those are probably two girls from the dungeon, I'm just saying. You don't know who those two girls are. They had instructions to not give men attention. That is very controlling and strange. And all of the R. Kelly victims have been saying that they weren't allowed to give men attention. I'm thinking those were two R. Kelly slaves in that fish tank. I'm just saying. But anyways, let's get into this commentary because y'all know I'm about to tell y'all how I feel. Okay, so first let me say that I feel like people like K. Michelle are the reason that R. Kelly is not locked up. R. Kelly has all of these friends in the industry, rappers, singers, producers. All of these people know the truth about R. Kelly and they're covering up for him. They feel like they owe him or they're his friends so they can't rat him out, they can't snitch. That is essentially what K. Michelle was saying in this interview. She not snitching because she owe him. Okay, so let's get into the part where she says she vented to her mom about everything she saw. Girl, why would you tell us that? Because if this ever goes to court, you have now implicated your own mother. Yes, if you saw stuff that R. Kelly was doing and you told your mama, both of y'all gonna get subpoenas and have to appear in court. I'm just saying. So congratulations for dragging your mom into that. Secondly, I want to address the fact that in one breath, she's saying that she has a voice to stand up for women. But in that same breath, she's saying that she's not going to tell R. Kelly's secrets. Girl, you chose a side and you chose R. Kelly's side. So I really don't know why you're saying you feel sorry for those girls. No, you don't. Because if you did, you'd speak up. She said she's in a difficult position. It puts me in a bad situation because it's like, I do have a voice for women. But then at the same time, this is the person you know personally who rescued you personally. Yeah. No, K. Michelle, you are not in a difficult position. Jocelyn Savage and her parents are in a difficult position. Any of the other girls that R. Kelly has are the ones that's in a difficult position. You are not in a difficult position, K. Michelle. You're making a choice to keep your mouth shut rather than tell the truth. And I find that kind of strange coming from the person who cried and really wanted people to have her back when you were saying that Memphis was abusing you, but nobody stood up for you because they were covering up for him. And now you're doing the same thing for R. Kelly. Girl, I just don't get it, I'm confused. And the last thing that I'm gonna address about this R. Kelly portion of the interview is Jason Lee and whoever edited this interview. Y'all, I make YouTube videos. I'm not a professional editor, but I can tell when someone cuts a scene and cuts out something that someone said. And he definitely did this in this interview. When K. Michelle says, and I know what I know, you can clearly see that the scene gets cut after she says that. Take a look, y'all, and pay attention. Yeah. And I know what I know. And you know, I be looking at them girls and I be feeling like so bad. Yeah, and I, I know what I know and you know I be looking at them girls and I be feeling like so bad the person editing this video cut out whatever juicy tea that she spilled on R. Kelly no disrespect to Jason Lee he did a very good job with the entire interview but the R. Kelly portion of the interview he definitely dropped the ball for sure I have no idea how he let her get away with clearly admitting that she's covering up for R. Kelly and clearly editing out something that she said about R. Kelly. Jason Lee asked all of the right questions, but he never asked follow-up questions, like to really get to the nitty gritty of what she knows about R. Kelly. Or maybe he did and that's what they cut out. I don't know. When she said she didn't want to kill the man who saved her, Jason Lee said he understands. That's why bloggers like Jason Lee are also contributing to R. Kelly being free. I'm just saying, if you're gonna interview somebody, ask them the real questions, especially somebody like K. Michelle, who claims to be an open book. Like seriously, if I was interviewing K. Michelle, when she said, I feel sorry for those girls, I would have said, well, if you feel so sorry for them, then speak up for them. But no, Jason Lee was just stroking her ego, trying to be her best friend, nodding his head and saying he understands. All right, y'all, let me move forward because this is starting to piss me off. Quickly, I want you guys to see what K. Michelle had to say about R. Kelly being verbally abusive to her. Check this out. But you've, you've been open about him being abusive and controlling. He's very controlling. He was not abusive. He never he was, physically hurt. No, he would say things like when I left the house, he'd be like, you're crazy. No one's going to be with you. Right, the Michael Jackson impression. Yeah, he was like, 
Yeah, he was like, well, nobody gonna be with you with Michael Jackson and Prince. And Michael was my friend. Prince wasn't dead. And I like, um, and I and he like white women. That's what he told me. He said, nobody gonna understand all of this. So psychologically, were you strong enough yet at that point to block it out and see it for what it was or no? Did it affect It you? started to affect me. Um, and I started to see, and I just started to be like, I can't, because I started to feel guilty and I started to feel like God gonna get me mm -hmm. and gonna give me karma and I got out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she also spoke about some of the things that she saw while she was living in his house. Oh my God, Jason, he would do stuff like, his whole house was like a world. And every day at like 10 o'clock AM, the whole house would play Step in the Name of Love. It don't matter if he was just sleep. And everyone would be like, step in the name of... It would just play it? Yeah, like, as you wake up, <laughs> you know? Every day he would make a new drink. And the drink would be called Sex on the Beach, Sex on the Counter, Sex in the Room, Sex Around the Corner. Every song would be that. All right, y'all. Like I told you, the interview is about two hours long. It's two parts to it. So if you want to watch the whole interview, I'll put the links below to the Hollywood Unlocked videos. All right, y'all. I'm done with this. I need to know what y'all think. What do y'all think about K. Michelle covering up for R. Kelly? Let me know what you think. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'm going to catch you in the next one, all right? Bye.